Um, Pastor Sherman's going to be uh, on the end of time. And so a lot of these songs are geared. Some of you may know these. They're way, they go way back when. So Jesus is coming soon. Trouble sometimes I hear feeling this heart's Freedom we all hope in No. 
Yeah, we're going to see him. At this time, we're going to um, do the offering. And uh, Brother Jim's going to play us a piece on the piano. <laughs> Thank you. 
So 
this time we're going to have some um, of our young people come up and they're, they're going to help us sing Waymakers this morning. And uh, he is the way maker in our life. That's where you get your one from, Steve. You are, I said, here moving in a way I worship you I worship you and you are here in this place I worship you I worship you Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, there is who you are, you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, there is who you are, and you are touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. And you are here healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are the Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. Turning lights around, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are the way maker, miracle worker, promise 
feeling well and I don't feel ill working. He never stopped, he never stopped working. He never stopped, he never stopped working. Even when I don't see him working. Even when I don't see him working. He never stopped, he never stopped working. He never stopped, he never stopped working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are the waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. One more time. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Praise God. That is who he is. At this time, Brother Gal is going to come and minister the word of God. So tonight we're going to do barbecue hamburgers and uh, we're going to do french fries. So at 5 o'clock p.m. we welcome you to come and join us. And uh, the best part is the root beer floats. And if you want an orange float, we're going to do that too for dessert. So it's real simple. Just come and join uh, with us and we'll have a lot of fun together. So... Um, and don't forget about the praise coming up to the praise service on Saturday. All right, Brother Gell. I forgot to put this thing on and everything. I'm listening to myself, getting used to it and all. We're coming to a closure on this Israel, and we've been talking about the past, the present, as well as also in the future. And the thing that about the future is it's coming very fast and things are happening and everything's going on. How many of you are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth? We come to a point of understanding that there is a time where God himself will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Think there will be no more sin. No more suffering, no more crying, no more weeping. All these things are being made possible. Why? Because Jesus will be reigning with peace and with prosperity. That's in the future. And as we look at it and all that is there, how that we now need to start paying attention to following Christ. I want you to look today at John, uh, Joel chapter 3. I want you to see this Israel story that's written there. It's a first when it talked about the past and it gave us the covenants. That means promises. It gave us the present. That's talking about the conflicts that are happening all there it's happening. It's my desire to come to the point to understanding that he gives to us Israel's future. And that's a coming. Something is going to happen. Something's going to take forth. And it's a time that we're going to come to a point of the return of Jesus Christ. Read with, or you can see it up here. In Joel chapter 3, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather nations and bring them into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and there I'll enter into the judgment against them concerning my people, 
Israel my inheritance. For they scattered up my nation and divided up my land. They cast out, for, cast out lots for the people, the boys for the prostitutes, and sold girls for the wine that they may drink. That's an evil thing. But it jumps down in verse 16. It said, but the Lord will roar from Zion, the thunders from Jerusalem, and the earth and the sky will tremble. But the Lord will be also a refuge for his people, a stronghold of Israel. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again with foreign invade her. And dropping down to verse 20, it said, Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem will be holy and endure though all, through all generations the blood guilt which I will have not pardoned. I will pardon the Lord dwell in Zion. There was a time in Jerusalem, Jesus was there. They crucified him. They brought him to a point of death, but he came up as he was resurrected. And things were beginning to happen. He promised one day in Acts chapter 1, it says that it, to lift up your heads and be, begin to rejoice in him. He's, and look as he's going away, the angel said, he's coming back. He's coming back again. And it came a point that there was a time that was going to come, that God's time of peace. When he and we understand and we see Israel as, and then we will know where we are, that a time clock of God. I want you to see this map here. And right there in the little bit that you can see there is some orange land a very small nation that is called Israel. And that is a totally wrapped up in God's plan, and that is where we need to stand with her and knowing that we must do so, that God holds that future for Israel and the world is going to see it. As Israel is now re being revealed, so goes the world. Just this last year, it made it to where that they were going to take all those nations not at Tel Aviv like it is now, but they're building it in Jerusalem. And all of them are going to come to that place. We see that first as Israel goes and so goes the world in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 6, said, I will strengthen Judah and save Israel. I will establish them because I love them. It would be as though I had never rejected them, for I know the Lord their God who will hear their cries. The second thing is there's a following of Christ and this Israeli future, our future that is there before us. In verse 16 said, in the end, the enemies of Jerusalem who sur survived the plague will go up to Jerusalem each year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the festivals of shelters. And any nation anywhere in the world that refuses to come to Jerusalem, this is talking about America, you can find this to come. It said that, that they, it's to come to Jerusalem to worship the King of the Lord Almighty and will have no rain. This is what I was telling you about last week. This is a wonderful scripture that is there that's going to take place upon Israel. And those that do not come and worship God their nations will not have any rain for one year. Could you imagine how serious that is? That is tremendous. It said then, then in verse 19, Egypt and the other nations will be all punished if they don't go to celebrate the festivals. Wow. Do you mean God's going to be really that mean? Yes. That's exactly what's going to come to pass. To look at her future, we must look at her past and her present. At the same time, we need to know that there's promises of God that are still there. He's telling us the truths that would give us that grace. He came to the point of that present uh, conflicts that are going on, and we read it, and we see it, and then all the time it's being done. They went through the city. They had things and bombs upon them, and they would go and kill the people that were there. 
It came to a point that they're shooting uh, uh, bombs upon Israel, and it comes from the north, it comes from the south, it comes from all around, and now Iran is wanting to come in from another place. We see those things that it tells about it, but literally we see Satan's scheme to destroy Israel in this process, and the sovereign plan is to restore Israel, and Israel is regarded to the point of a redemption of a Christ of our Lord and his return. It all started May 14, 1948. It came at a time when they began to quote that they were going to be set free by God and they were going to be people that can come to Israel. When they were taken to the different German places and all that, they didn't find a way to go to, go to did not want to go back to what had left been to the point that their children, their parents had been killed and things that had happened. They came to a point that they said, it's time for us to go back to Israel. And they went to Israel. They began to come to that time. It came to the point that these conflicts and the things that were taking place, what are we going to do this future thing? What are we going to do about these major conflicts? What's this Israel's re re redemption that's taking place? What's this defeat of Satan? What's all these things that he's trying to reveal to us and that we can come to a point that they can be redeemed by God in this major complex. And the, suddenly we, some, we see something is going to happen in the scriptures that is now beginning to reveal something that we did not know. We thought about it. We heard about it. We thought maybe it would never happen. But suddenly the day will come when a rapture will come. A time when people with that word rapture means to be caught away. And suddenly the church is going to disappear at the same time, and the church of the Israel is now beginning to do things that was never done before. It came to this post, this post rapture and tribulations that we come and find it in First Thessalonians chapter four. It said, "For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the call of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God." First all the Christians who died will rise from their graves, then gather with them. We who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. It comes to a point that he wanted us to understand it. And this re, pre-return that's going to begin to come. And what are we going to do with this thing called the rapture? What are we going to do with this return? What are we going to do about this other thing that's been preached about for years upon years upon years? And suddenly we begin this, the tribulational period, a period of time that's going to take place. And from chapter 6 to chapter 18 of, of Revelation, you begin to see this period of time begins to take place. It looks to what Jesus said. Did he say this? Yes, on earth he said this in Matthew 24. For then there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. He begins to reveal this to us to where that we can understand. And all of human history is going to begin to see things that never had been or what they thought might come to pass. You see a period of time in the book of Revelation. You see in chapter 6, in verse 8, you see there's a time that's given that there's going to be something that's going to happen in the world after the rapture takes place. It talks about that period of time. What it's saying to there then is that one Point one fourth of the earth is going to be destroyed. Now, I know there's more than 7 billion people on the earth. That's hard for me to do this. Can I just say 1 billion or let's say four? What it says then is there's going to come a time that there's going to be a destruction and death and things are going to happen. One fourth of the top. See what happened? It's then now 3 billion people, and actually I would have to say 7 point something, whatever it is that it is now being. It came to them that wondering, what are we going to do? But then you look over in 
uh, Revelation chapter 9, you find of time that there's another thing that takes place. There's death and takes place upon the earth. And what did we have? We had three, didn't we? Now it's saying then that there's only going to be one will die. And, and, you know, let's do this. It's easier to hold that way. I can't, I can't do this, but it can. There's only two now because the first, the second, it took place. And these are the things that nobody wants to hear these kind of things. But the truth of the matter is things are going to take place during what's called a tribulational period of time. But there's at the same time, there's a mercy of God. And it's only if you accept and you come to a point that you believe and you know that God's going to do those things in your life. It's a period of time that's seven years according to Daniel chapter 9. It's a time that this 490 years and the 70 and all the things begin to reveal itself. And there's a lot of things I can tell you about that. But in Jeremiah, it talks about it in chapter 30 of Jeremiah. It said, these are the words of the Lord spoke concerning uh, Israel and Judah, this is what the Lord says, cries of fear are heard, terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with the hands on his stomach, like a woman in labor, every face turned deathly pale? How awful that day will be. None will be like it. It'll be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Almighty. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. This is the Davidic covenant of the Messiah. Then it says, then I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all the nations, among which I scatter you. I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only with justice. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. Israel is under the discipline, discipline, disciplining hand of God. I read this and I sit there myself. I've heard this since I was a kid. I've heard it all my life. I've heard people declaring it. And I thought to myself, will it come? Will it come? Will it come? We kept looking and looking and looking. And I want to tell you the truth is the church began to say, it's never going to happen. And they came to a point that their faith in God and what he wanted to do. It came to a point that there's going to be some things in the Bible that I remember them. I remember when somebody said, turn to the book of Revelation. Man, I tell you, you didn't have to preach. Just say you opened up the altar. Just the very fact of uh, reading from Revelation. I wanted to go up and, and make sure I was giving my heart right to God. And all the things he's done. And now we see it. There's a time that I read about the Gogs and the Magogs. I began to see things that was happening that I thought, how can you understand all of these things? And then you look at in chapter Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39. And suddenly you thought, what is this all about? This thing of bodies are coming together and they rise up and they get skin and bone and all the things. What are you going to do in a time of tribulation? What are you going to do in a time of a rapture? What's it going to be like when the attacks that come upon the world? What is it going to be like? when all things begin to come to that. The first map here that I want to show with you is a little place called Israel. And it, it's a very small little place. But somehow or another, everything in the world happens in that little place. And the Bible calls it a time that's called Magog. It talks about Russia. It talks about the former Soviet Union. You see that there's Meshech and Tubal. You begin to hear and read these words of Moscow and Turkey. You look in another place, there's Persia, which was ancient times, but is now Iran. The Kush, the Ethiopia, the Sudan, the, the Sudan. The, then it talks about the Put in the Bible. It's hard to understand it, but it's places like Libya, Algeria, and Tunisia. 
It came to a point that many of these nations began to come together. The jihadist nations, the anti-Israels, the unsurrounding nations that are all around. You look into the others like Egypt and Lebanon and Syria and Jordan. You see the surrounding of all these things began to blunt and just come into these things, the keys of the Israeli future that's going to take place. It's a time that there's going to be uh, arms agreements, there's going to be oil agreements, there's going to be funds agreements, and all the things are going down in it. They're coming to the point that they want to steal up from the Dead Sea and things like that, and they're all there that's going to take place. What are we going to do in this future type a place called Israel? What's this unrest? What is the things that are coming down upon it? We looked at Russia, who has already trained thousands of Iranians to be nuclear physicists, and prophecy is getting into place. God is going to intervene in the things that are taking place at this time. Let me read from you in Ezekiel 38, now up in chapter 38, verse 18. When Gog attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger will be aroused, declares the sovereign Lord. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time there shall be a great earthquake in the hand of Israel. Verse 21. I will summon a sword against Gog, that was Russia, and all the mountains declaring the sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstone, and burning sulfur on him. This is not going to be a good day, my friends. Verse 23. And I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the height of many nations, then they will know that I am the Lord. Something is going to take place. It's something's going to happen in Israel. In chapter 39, verse 7, I will make known my holy name among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profan uh, profaned, and the nations will know that I, the Lord, and the Holy One in Israel. It's a tribulated time. It's a time that the Messianic Jews are going to rise up, and they're going to come forth with 144,000. It's amazing what God is going to do at that time. In verse 21, it said, I will display my glory amongst the nations, and all the nations will see the punishment. I afflict in the hand I lay upon them. From that day forward, the house of Israel will know that I am the Lord their God. Verse 27, and when I have fought them back from the nations and have gathered them from the countries of their enemies, I will show myself holy through them in the sight of many nations. Verse 28, then they will know that I am the Lord their God. In a, think about that. A nation becomes a people of God. And I sent them into the exile amongst the nations. I will gather them to their own lands. And having any behind, I will no longer my face from them. I will pour out my spirit in the house of the Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. Wow. Oh. That's a big one to think about. But my friends, this is what he's promised. And if God can keep and fulfill his promises to Israel, then he can keep and fulfill the promises in your life. God is going to bless the Gentiles. God is going to pour out upon his Jews. He's going to reach out to reach all those. I can show you in the Bible that Egypt is going to be blessed one of these days. My friends, God wants to do all these things. 
But unfortunately, there comes a time in life where it's going to be a battle of Armageddon. It's a time that the mound of destruction, a conclusions of tribulations, the valleys of Jezreel. This is a picture of the Mount Camera, Carmel that he's talking about. And uh, Elijah had been up on that mountain himself too at one time. But there's a valley of Jezreel. It's a time of Megiddo. It's a time of Armageddon. It's a times of things that are going to take place. They're going to be fought and things are going to happen and they'll never stop. It's amazing that Napoleon in 1799 wrote these words. All the armies of the world could maneuver their forces on the, this vast plain. There is no place in the whole world more suited for war. It's the most natural battleground in the whole earth. This is a place that's out there, and it's there. It's coming to be. Let's look at Revelation. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its waters was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. This is talking about the Chinese the, and the other ones that are over there. They're going to come to war. They're going to make a big war then at that time. And then I, was, I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs that came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous work, signs. And they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for their battle. And on that great day of God Almighty, they gathered the kings together to the places that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. I want to tell you that's coming to pass. You're going to see it. I don't know where it's at, but they do. It's all made up what I just read to you, but I've never been there. But the Antichrist will stand there. A beast is going to stand there in Revelations. False prophets in Revelations are going to be there. And there are the ones that are in charge at the end of time. And Satan's scheme will begin to rise. The evil trinity is going to get in place. The deception that is going to take place in the Armageddon is going to be a common word. A time of a battle, a destroying and destruction of things will take place. Israel won't have to fight. The Almighty fights against the evil trio. It's a time that now he's coming back. He's going to step upon the earth. And when he does on that Mount of Olives, the earth is going to split open immediately. It's going to rise to the east and to the west. The river is going to come down. It's coming at a time. It's going to take place. There's nothing in the world that anybody can do anything about it. In Revelation 17, verse 12, said the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but for one hour, a short period of time, will receive authority as kings along the beast. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make wars against the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them because he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Oh, don't you want to be called, chosen, and faithful followers? And the point takes place. It tells us to understand it's a time of a call. Something God's going to do. God has chosen, and not only chosen, he's a faithful follower. What do you do? What do you come down to as you look at this? And you see that that future and all the things that have been promised to us. And this seems such a, a, a hard thing to do. Can I say this to you? Next week, I'm starting with the parables of Jesus Christ. I'd rather preach on that any day than what I'm preaching on right now. Because Jesus, when he gave those wonderful parables, they're things that give us that God's trying to do. And it's more hope for us when we look at these things. But my friends, you also need to be aware. You've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. Jesus Christ is coming. 
He's going to be the calling of the redeemed blood, blood brought church. Those that were chosen and faithful and coming to God. Let me read it, John, Joel 3, verse 1 again. In those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather nations and bring them into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Therefore, I will enter into judgment against them concerning my people Israel, my inheritance, for they have scattered up my nations and divided up my people. The Palestinians said came to that they have petitioned the United Nations on, in September 2011 is to ca carve all the land of Israel and come to that understanding. He said then that they cast lots for my people, the boys for my prostitutes, the sold, the sold girls and wine and things that they've done. But then there was set, verse 16, the Lord will roar from Zion, thunders from Jerusalem. The earth, the sky will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a strong hold of Israel. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will be foreignable. foreigners. They can't be that anymore. And Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem will be holy and endure through all generations. The blood guilt, he's going to pardon. He's going to bring pardon to them. How do you come to it, this future? It's a time that the Messiah is going to come. A time he's going to rule. There's going to be a Davidic throne. The whole world is going to come. They have to come. There's a story that talks about a young man in college who went into the gym to shoot some hoops. The janitor had been cleaning up the gym, but he was sitting down, taking a break, and he was reading the Bible. The young man walked up to the janitor and said, what are you reading? The janitor said, I'm reading Revelations. The young man said, I don't have a clue what Revelation is all about. I do not understand it. Do you? The janitor replied, absolutely. The young man said, do you mind explaining it to me? The janitor said, sure. Jesus wins. Don't you know that Jesus is going to win? And if Jesus is, wins and Israel wins, then I can win. You can win. If we'll just come to him and accept him in our hearts and in our lives. He doesn't just have his eyes upon Israel. He sees the entire world. He knows all things. He's seen you time and time again. And he's just saying, I want to love you. I want to accept you. And these are things, I can tell you all this bad stuff, and it, I think it's time for us to get awake to that thing. But my friends, it's time for us to come to a point that we say, God, help me to win, Lord Jesus. Help me to win. And I, when I get in those parables, you're going to win. <laughs> it's a whole lot better than what I just shared with you. But I want to do this. If I ever see something going on, I want to take these three sermons and preach them again because it's telling us it's time to get ready. We have to get ready. Aren't you glad? Praise the Lord. I got some people up there, don't you? We all come to that point in our lives that this is what God can do if we'll just let him do that in our lives. He's a great, big, wonderful God. Amen.
Okay, go on. Anybody got a comment that you want to make? Yeah, maybe I can answer something. If I can't, Terry's going to answer everything for you. <laughs> no, she won't do it. Anymore. 